Running a single coach to Cheyenne took some 600 horses switched out along the route. At an average of eight miles an hour, it took two days to make the trek. And at any point along the trail, evil and desperate men could be lurking. Early on in my Deadwood days, I found out firsthand just how dangerous the journey was. I was riding shotgun to Cheyenne with $65,000 worth of gold. It's Robert's roost up ahead. I don't know, I got a bad feeling this time, Mr. Bullock. Yeah, and I got 20 dimes in this scatter gun. We'd all like to learn to be somewhat fearless. A lot of us let our inhibitions get in the way of some things we do, and he never did. Get your hands up high where I can see them. There's a lot I'd prefer to forget about that night, but suffice it to say that next morning, that highwayman was found dead. I think that Bullock was afraid of the chaos in his soul, because when he lost it, he lost it all the way. I think it frightened him, and he did something about it. He, he became a force for order, not only in his own nature, but in the community as a whole. Deadwood itself was no less dangerous than the roads into it. Within months of my arrival, the Gulch was home to 75 saloons and dozens of other parlors of ill repute. If you're a highwayman, you make your money on the trail, what are you going to do with your money? You're going to go someplace where you think it's the most easy to spend it and enjoy it, and they would come to Deadwood. In a town teeming with vices, Al Swearingen's gem was the crown jewel. It was a theater. It was a den of iniquity. It was a saloon. They had prize fights, boxing matches in there. They loved masquerade balls. Uh, you had prostitutes. You pretty much get anything you want at the gem saloon. The portrayal of Swearingen on Deadwood uh, really tones him down quite a bit. He was a lot worse than the way he's portrayed. And that's saying something, because he's portrayed as a monster. <laughs> he had great imagination, very resourceful guy. He had a bunch of different businesses. He knew what his real business was. He was a whore master. He didn't miss a trick in terms of exploitation. At a time when most frontier families were scraping by on about $600 a year, Swearingen was pocketing $5,000 on an average night. He was the king of the part of town we called the Badlands, where every kind of drug, drink, and depravity was ripe for the taking, and where men with weak wills routinely parted with their fortunes. <laughs> 